In this video series, we'll be exploring spherical geometric construction. This involves a sphere and a compass, which allows me to draw circles of various sizes on this sphere. To put this in perspective, let's start with the basics. In comparison, a circle drawn on a plane has a radius that's on the same plane as the circle. However, when you're drawing a circle on a sphere, the radius is be termed the conical radius, and it is not on the same plane as a circle. And that changes things drastically. If you look at what we can do with a circle on a plane, <coughs> we can use a radius to mark off equal arc segments, <coughs> which defines a hexagon on, a, on the circle. And that will not happen on a sphere. And if I could demonstrate using arbitrary conical radius. And I'll just start by making a reference mark. There's one, two segments, three, four, five. And this next one is overlapping, so it's not quite six. Um, the smaller I make the circle, the closer I will converge on six until the circle disappears. However, I found if I make it larger, I will find a point where we will actually divide that circle into five equal arc segments. And let me show you a diagram of that. So this is a what I call a fifth harmonic. It's a unique case where this conical radius is the same length as the pentagon that gets inscribed in, in the circle. Let me see if I can describe that to you, show you. First I'll draw the reference circle. And this is a unique size for the fifth harmonic. Make one, that's my reference mark. There's one segment, second, third, fourth, and we come back to the beginning. So now I have an inscribed pentagon in this circle. Now if I put this in perspective, there's an infinite number of circles that could be drawn on this sphere. But there's one and only one where the edge length is also the conical radius. Okay, so now that we have an inscribed pentagon for this circle, let's see what else we can do. I'll go back to um, a circle on a plane. <clears throat> Once we have a circle on a plane that has its inscribed hexagon, we can move the compass and draw additional circles around the per perimeter of that circle and create what's called a flower of life pattern. In fact, that can continue to grow as more circles are added centered at inter intersection points of, of circles. So let's explore if something that exists in a similar fashion on a sphere. So now I'm going to move the compass back to these intersection points and draw complete circles. So that's the five circles added to this arrangement. Now we've got this five petal pattern. I've also introduced some additional intersection points down at the bottom. And I'll continue adding circles at these points.
So there I've added five additional circles at the bottom, which defined another intersection point here. Add in the twelfth circle. And what we have here now is that these twelve circles all have converged on twelve intersection points that happen to be the twelve vertices of an icosahedron, which is one of the platonic solids. And now that we have the icosahedron def defined, we can also now find the dodecahedron and find the vertices of the dodecahedron by just triangulating between the vertices of an icosahedron and find the center of this triangular face. And that would be now the center of one of those faces. I'll continue to do the rest of them. All right, so now I have the 12, the 20 vertices of the dodecahedron defined here. And now we can start putting a straight line between these points. There's one of the pentagonal faces of the dodecahedron. I'll finish the rest. So there's the uh, completed dodecahedron. Probably now we remove the icosahedron. Let's give you a clearer picture of the dodecahedron. So basically, the fifth harmonic defines now the dodecahedron and the icosahedron. There are other harmonics which I will show in the following videos. So now, I need to increase the size of the conical radius so I can divide its circle into hopefully four equal arc segments. Let's see how this is an experimental approach. Now let me start with a reference point. There's one arc, two arcs, three arcs, four arcs, and still some remainder. So I need to make this a little bigger. So I need to actually first erase this and start over again. So I've adjusted the, the conical radius, and we'll try again. Make a reference point. One arc. Second arc. Third arc. And now we came back to where we started. So this now has divided this, actually it's the equator, into four equal arc segments. So now I know this is tuned to the fourth harmonic. Let me just draw in now the additional circles. I checked that the yellow side should line up as well. Okay, so it's actually these are two circles on top of each other. And let me try this one over here. And again, this should line up 
on this side here with the same circle. So what, in effect, there are actually, well, it looks like there's only three circles, there's actually six, and there are six intersection points that correspond to the six vertices of an octahedron. Yet another platonic solid. Okay, so now we've got the octahedron and this dual is the cube. And let me just try to find the center point for the face of this um, octahedron to locate the uh, vertices of a cube. All right, so that'd be one vertices there. So now I've located the eight vertices of a cube, and I'll be using the straight edge to draw in the edges. And now here we have the cube drawn in by connecting the uh, vertices, the eight vertices of the cube. Now there's still one more platonic solid to find. Which we'll be using the third harmonic for that one. So now after some experimentation, I found a length for the third harmonic. Let me demonstrate. You notice here, the difficulty here is the, the length of the conical radius brings a circle into the southern hemisphere. So that's the first circle. Now let's see Make sure I can divide this into three equal parts. This should converge back onto itself. So here, this circle has now been divided into three equal arc segments, defining an inscribed triangle. And now let me continue to draw out the full circles for this harmonic. the second, that's third to third. This is the fourth. So what we have here now are four circles intersecting at the four vertices of a tetrahedron. Okay, now let's summarize what we've seen so far. We've looked at three different circles based on three different conical radiuses. There was the fifth harmonic circle, the fourth harmonic circle, and the third harmonic. The fifth harmonic was based on an inscribed pentagon and led to the discovery of the icosahedron and its dual, the dodecahedron. The fourth harmonic is based on an inscribed square and led us to discover the octahedron and the cube. And the third harmonic, based on an inscribed triangle, allowed us to discover the tetrahedron. We don't know what the exact lengths of these conical radius are at this point, so in the next section I'll be uh, deriving a geometric formula that will allow us to compute the exact values for these conical radius.